My name is Mike Garlier. And I'm Steve Jones. When Steps, the Backstreet Boys and Westlife dominated the pop charts, we decided to write a script. Based on our experiences as holiday entertainers. It sat in an attic for the last 16 years. How terrible is the writing? How awful will the acting be? Only you can help us decide. This is Bad Scripts. Bad scripts time again. I'm here once more with Mike Gollier. Oh, what? No effervescent, no mysterious, no magical, just plain old simple Mike Gollier this time. I didn't want to give you a big head. I felt like I might be stroking your ear too much, so I was going to dumb it down a little bit for you this week. Uh, well, I'm not sure I appreciate that, Steve. Everyone likes a good stroking every now and then. <laughs> let's Let's look back quickly on where we've come from and where we are right now with bad scripts and with... More importantly, last resort. In the last episode, whew, such goings on. Tears, tantrums, tequila. The, all the guys have been on a bit of a night out. Um, Adam and Sam, you know, Sam's gone through a breakup. Adam's been there to support her. We debated whether Adam's intentions were honourable. And we also talked about the the change in attitude towards Dan as well, becoming... Um, much more romantic towards Donna, and of course, a favourite character, who I hope we see again, Donna's mum, who you portrayed with a questionable Essex accent. <laughs> All of my accents are questionable, as, as are yours, Mike. We, we never deny that for a moment. <laughs> well, I think my, my Welsh Pete uh, really drops to new depths um, in terms of trying to deliver a Welsh accent, which made even worse when you did yours and it sounded so natural and just rolled off the tongue and then I did mine and it did not. So uh, I think we'll see more of that in this episode. I think we'll see uh, <laughs> quite a few different characters uh, appear as we start to close off, I suppose, towards the end of episode two. Yeah, episode two of The Last Resort, which is now episode nine of our podcast. Not confusing at all? No, not in the slightest. I think we jump straight back in and see what's happening down at Camp Holidays. Interior Dance Studio. The lads are stood in a line, waiting to perform their dance routine to Judy. Judy enters with Eddie and sits on the chair at the front. So, what have you got to show me? Um, We've been working on this idea for a couple of weeks now. Uh, We were wondering whether we could perform a couple of our own numbers. I'll have to see, Robin... And decide if you're good enough. Let's not forget that you would still be representing the company. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Judy, we understand that. So you're a boy band? Not not exactly. Yeah, we are, uh, you know, like E17. Have you got a name? Uh, We haven't really... Fusion. We're called Fusion. Adam, Robin and Pete look at Dan. What? Yeah, I thought of it last night. Hmm, okay. Are you ready then? Oh yeah, it's track three. Adam hands Eddie a CD. Eddie puts the CD into the player and presses play. The guys stand in their starting positions. They start the routine and Dan is already making mistakes. Robin sneers at Dan and the rest of the lads perform the routine with lots of energy. Pete is singing along with the track as he would on stage. The routine finishes and all of the lads stand out of breath. Judy sits motionless. She finally speaks. Who did the choreography? I did. Uh, We did? It wasn't bad. Obviously needs cleaning up. Do you think you're ready? They all nod their heads. Well, you're not. Judy points at Dan. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. If I'm going to put you on, then I expect it to be perfect. And I'm sorry, but it's really not. Judy, it will be. Give us a chance. We'll be ready, right, lads? There is no such thing as a chance in entertainment. Please, uh, we've worked so hard. Then I advise you to work harder, boys. You're on tomorrow afternoon. Judy gets up. Eddie, you'll be able to sort out the mini-discs. Yeah, sure. Judy leaves the room. As soon as she leaves, 
the lads jump up and down, whooping and cheering. Here comes fusion! Exterior, trapeze tent. Kelly is stood in the centre of the tent. She's holding a microphone and is about to introduce Vladimir. There is a large crowd waiting to watch the act and all of Vladimir's family are stood on the side of the barriers. As Kelly announces the show, the audience cannot understand what she is saying as her Scottish accent seems to be stronger on the microphone. (laughs) If that's even possible... (laughs) Okay, here goes. <laughs> okay. um, Come on. Think Scottish, think Scottish, think Scottish. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to present you direct from the State Circus of Slovakia, the one and only, the fantastic Vladimir and his amazing huge red ball. The audience clap and cheer and Vladimir's family split to reveal Vladimir walking on top of a four-foot fiberglass ball. He manages to complete one lap around the arena. He still has a cast on his arm, and he decides to perform a handstand on top of the ball. As he lifts his legs in the air, he loses his balance, and the ball rolls from under him. Vladimir crashes headfirst on the floor and flops in a heap. The ball rolls across the arena, knocking over Vladimir's family before rolling into the barrier. Kelly looks on, expressionless. Oh, right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Vladimir! Vladimir sits up drunkenly. Drunkenly? That's not even a word. Drunkenly? Drunkenly. (laughs) Shall I say, shall I even say that? Vladimir sits up. I think you should, it's in the script. Vladimir sits up drunkenly and waves. No problem! Vladimir then passes out as the audience walk away, both shocked and confused. Okay, so Vladimir is has taken the mantle from Robin, who earlier in the season, everything bad happened to Robin. And we seem to have passed that baton over to Vladimir, who now everything he touches is uh, turns to crap. What's happened there? Oh, there's mo- there, there is a difference, though. Uh, Robin was a victim to stuff happening to him. Vladimir is doing it to himself. Now, I, I've got to say as well, because I know that you and I, in the last episode, we talked about, you know, having some experiences with, with those that work in the circus and, and you know, artists of, of that sense. They were really, really good, these guys, uh, and very, very professional and expert. We just heightened it in this one. So Vladimir does not represent anyone who is a uh, professional circus performer in any way, shape or form. Um, His incompetence is purely down to him and a comedy device for the show. Absolutely. And, you know, the number of hours I've watched some of these dedicated performers rehearse for a 10 minute show. It's just incredible. Eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours a day in a studio just rehearsing it's just the most dedicated performance you've ever seen and that's why 99.9 percent of the time they are flawless acts we just like to have our characters be just that little bit ditzy i think at some point though vladimir is going to kill a member of his family the the human pyramid that that (laughs) happened two episodes ago (laughs) to to really what's going on now Um, the guy is a liability he is an absolute lunatic 100 percent is likely to be an insurance nightmare Interior, wardrobe. Daisy is sat at her table working on some costumes. Adam and Robin enter and seem excited. What can I do for you guys? Oh, Daisy, we need a really big favour. Yes, uh, Judy has given us the go-ahead to do a couple of songs tomorrow. We're supposed to look like a boy band and, um, well... Well, it'll be a challenge, but I think I can just about handle it, like, really? Adam excitedly kisses Daisy on the cheek. You're not going to regret this, Daisy. We won't forget you when we're famous, promise. Daisy smiles back at Adam. I need you to come back here later on. I have a good time at the moment. Uh, that, that That's fine, Daisy. Uh, shall we say around uh, six-ish? Aye, perfect. Uh, make sure you all bring some clothes and we'll see what we can do. Right, I've got to get Moo out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's the most Welsh Geordie I've ever heard. I don't know, I'm so sorry. I just lost it. Do you want to try it again? No, it's fine. 
Interior Dance Studio. Dan is on his own going through the dance routines. He's becoming more and more frustrated the more mistakes he makes, but he shows his determination to get it right. Donna appears at the door and peers through the glass. She quietly walks into the room and stands at the back. Dan has his back to her and is not aware. Dan, finally get a moves right, cheers in triumph. Yes! Donna claps her hands and Dan spins around, startled by the uninvited visitor. What you? Oh, it, it's you. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. It's okay. What, what are you doing? Dan shuffles uncomfortably on his feet. If I tell you, you better not laugh. I promise, I, I won't. Well, me and some of the guys have put together a band. Really? Wow. What, what, what are you called? Fusion. That was my idea. You know, the name. Do you play instruments? Or... No, no, we dance and we sing. Like a boy band. Yeah, but, but we ain't cheesy or nothing. Oh, no, it, it sounds great. Are you, are you doing some shows then? Uh, tomorrow? That's, that's why I'm in here, really. I, I keep getting it wrong. <laughs> Looked pretty good where I was standing. About last night. It's okay. I understand. You, you were really drunk. I weren't drunk. What are you saying? Donna walks over to Dan, leans close to him, and kisses him passionately on the lips. I'm not that shy. Whoa! Donna! Where did that come from? <laughs> she has decided she's going to make take that leap now. The little bit of alcohol last night has prompted her to take that leap. She's seen that Dan's interested and she's... Is she going to offer an apology as well for jumping in a cab with her mum and leaving Dan outside the nightclub when they go to the same area? <laughs> that's is she really, going to do that as well? I thought that really I thought that's you. what she was doing. That really bothered you, didn't it? <laughs> well, she just admitted she wasn't drunk. If she said, oh, I was so drunk, my mum put me in the cab and I couldn't remember, she's like, oh, I went drunk. She just, she just wants him to know. She doesn't want to miss out on something. And secondly... She wants to get in there at the ground level, so if he does become famous, she can say she uh, she hit that first. I think I think you're being a little bit of a sceptic here. I think there's, there's <laughs> genuine love in the air here between these two unlikely lovers, and you're poo pooing it with with your uh, with your negative attitude towards romance. <laughs> it's true. I'm sorry. I'm still on the come down of trying to do a Geordie accent. I just hope Daisy doesn't appear anymore because uh, it's really She's... stressful. She's in the next scene. <clears throat> oh, my God. Interior, wardrobe. The lads are stood around with bags of clothes. Daisy walks in, eating a pot noodle. Oh, why is she walking in with a pot noodle? I mean, why is that important? Is that a plot point? Is that important or something? Maybe she spills it everywhere. All right, boys. Let's see what you got, then. The lads empty the bags all over the floor. Daisy inspects the piles for a few seconds. Anyone have any problems with swapping and changing between you, Lake? As long as they ain't puffy or girly. Oh, grow up. Daisy puts her pot noodle on the desk and rummages through the clothes, handing items to the boys. Various shots of the lads wearing different clothing from the sublime to the ridiculous. Nothing at this point seems to be working. I, I feel like we have our first montage. I look bloody stupid. I ain't going out dressed like this. Dan is wearing a very tight t-shirt with a smiley face on it. He has a check shirt tied around his waist and big baggy dungarees. <sighs> All right, back to the drawing board? No, 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 no. Back to the drawing board, like? Wayne enters looking smug. In one hand is an ice cream cone, and the other is a slush drink. What's Lamal doing over there? Shh! We're finding images for the boys! Bloody hell, you be here all night. And what's that look going for? Sad tosser? The boys all ignore him. Wayne, come here, Lake. You could be so supportive sometimes, Lake. I support talent. I've got no time for crap, but I've got an open mind. What time are you on tomorrow? Half two. Uh, well, it's my day off tomorrow. Do you think it's worth me coming in to watch? Well, do as you like. Wayne walks to the door. Oh, I will. Wayne leaves. 
Uh, shall we carry on, Lake? A few more outfits are put on and taken off. Close up on Daisy. Why, aye, that's it. That's fusion, Lake. So Wayne, Wayne sort of come in and said, "Should I be supportive?" But in the most he's unsupportive just nosy. way, he's just. Yeah, he's just nosy. I think he's just rattling them up. I think it's his thing, you know. I, he's just he just wants to know what's going on, doesn't he? Yeah. But the proof in the pudding is whether Wayne actually turns up to watch them because then he is really intrigued. I apologise to anyone um, in the northeast, whoever hears this, and cringes on that. On that, I'm sitting here cringing myself. So please forgive me in all. And ways. it's not like I didn't give you the opportunity for me to do it. You chose. To submit yourself and submit the rest of us to that for the sake of our audience. So I, I... I fully invest in the character, Steve. I owe it to the story and I owe it to the audience. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Exterior on resort. Adam and Dan are walking back towards the chalets. They run into Sam, who is carrying some takeaway. Hey, what are you up to? Oh, I, I missed dinner, so I thought I'd treat myself to some takeaway. Why not? You had a nice day? Yeah, it's been all right. Some kid threw up by the pool this afternoon, and it took and it took ages for the cleaners to get there. Wayne was having a huge go at me because of it. Uh, why? He was going on about me and using my initiative and instincts, really lecturing me. Yeah, I know how that feels. My advice? Just ignore him, Sam. They're now outside the staff chalets. In particular, they're outside Sam's accommodation. Do you guys want to come in? I can't eat all this by myself. Dan spots Donna in the distance. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I've got um, some other things I should be getting on with. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Dan walks off and Adam and Sam smile. Do you want to come in then? Well, I, uh, I don't want to impose. Oh, you're not. Sam opens the door, and Adam follows her in. Interior, Sam's chalet. Sam and Adam are sat on the bed eating the takeaway. There is music playing quietly in the background. So you kept this uh, boy band quiet then? Oh, we didn't want to look like idiots if it never happened. Well, why, why did you decide to do it anyway? Hang, hang on a minute. Was it because of that other boy band a few weeks ago? No. I mean, well, look, we were we were already doing the band before that. Really? <laughs> yeah, uh, really. Well, I can't wait to watch you tomorrow. Sam clears away the empty cartons. So, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Thanks for last night. You're, you're a real friend. Look, it was nothing. But I must warn you. What? Well, these ears aren't cheap. I'm afraid I might have to charge you next time. Sam giggles. Oh yeah? What kind of fee am I looking at? <laughs> well... That... <laughs> that... Sorry, I'll get it out. <laughs> Hold on. Look, look me that... deep in the eyes, Mike, as you say this next line to me. This is getting really bad. Okay, um, that all depends on what service you require. What are my options? <laughs> Adam laughs nervously and looks at the floor. Sam changes the subject. I really like this song. Playing is Crazy by Britney Spears. <laughs> oh, I I'm really tired. Oh, I'll go. Adam stands up, but Sam stops him. Stay, just for a little while. Adam nods and sits back on the bed. Sam gets up. I'm just going to put my gym jams on. <laughs> gym jams? Oh, dear. Sam goes into the bathroom. Adam gets up and walks around the room, looking at various pictures. He spots one of Sam and her ex-boyfriend, Craig, arms wrapped around each other. Adam picks up the picture and examines it. Sam comes out of the bathroom and Adam replaces the picture. Adam turns around to see Sam in a vest and silk pyjama bottoms. He's a little taken aback. What? Nothing. Sam climbs into bed. Adam sits on the end. 
what is going on in this episode, mate? What What's going on here? I don't know. I mean, we're going to find out in a minute because the next scene appears to be still in the same Shelley, but a little bit later. So maybe we should so, find out what happens I, and then we can talk about it. I'm telling you right now, just before um, we move into the next scene, Adam's probably sitting there thinking, looking down at his feet going, God, I hope I clip my toenails. Um, if not, maybe you'll just leave his socks on. <laughs> God, I hope I change my socks. <laughs> God, I hope I've got matching socks. <laughs> Without holes in them. <laughs> just the one big toe sticking oh, out. God, I'm not wearing those novelty Simpson boxer shorts that I own. <laughs> Interior, Sam Chalet. It's a little later. The tape playing in the stereo clicks off. In the bed is Sam, sleeping. Lying next to her on top of the covers is Adam, also asleep. Sam is cuddled up to Adam and her head is on his shoulder. It looks very relaxed and cosy. Adam wakes up and notices it's very late. He carefully moves away from Sam and stands. She turns and cuddles her pillow, smiling. Adam looks at her and tucks Sam in. He then tiptoes to the door and carefully opens it. Nails clattering along the hard floor as he does. (laughs) Click, click, tap, 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 tap. (laughs) Exterior, Sam (laughs) Shannon. Adam carefully closes the door without making any noise. He walks away to reveal Kelly stood in the background smoking. She takes a drag and watches Adam carefully as he walks away. Adam doesn't notice her. So um, I know we laughed a lot in that scene. I think it's the only way of... It's a nervous laugh. It's the only way of dealing with it. But I I, I mean, okay. So we've debated a lot about Adam's intentions here, right? And there is Sam in a vest and silky Jimmy Jammies. Um, Wants him to stay. And he walks away. He just leaves. Yeah, well, I think he's being consistent in in that behaviour. He seems to be walking away from every opportunity to be intimate with anybody. He did that with Kelly, now he appears to have done it with Sam. I'm wondering if Adam may not be more attuned to spending some time with Robin. No, I don't think that's it. I I genuinely believe... All right, let's bring it more personal. So, Steve... um... We know Adam walked away. I do believe it was because his toenails were a little bit too long and he worried about that. Um, In a similar situation, what would be going, you know, what would your intentions be and what would you be thinking about? It's a strange one, isn't it? Because he's, you know, we noticed that he's looked at the picture of the ex still on the wall. And I think if, as I suspected all along, that Adam has genuine feelings for Sam, that he's playing the slow game. He doesn't want to rush in and be that rebound guy. He wants to be there. He wants to be around her. He wants to ingrate himself into her emotional circle further and be seen as that chivalrous guy. I think he wants to be in a relationship with her. And then, and and then he'll, he'll rock her boots, you know, and, uh, and give her a good scene too. But I think at the moment, he is definitely playing for the long-term relationship. Well, I will. I, I'm sure your wife and listeners have noticed that uh, that was a nice way to negotiate around that that question there, Steve, by putting it back onto Adam. Um, so, you know, well done. I, I want to, I'm not going to force you to answer it. <laughs> so, to, to throw it back at you, then you seem to be quite interested in in his toenails have have you ever been in a situation where you've um uh, unexpectedly about to be intimate with somebody and and some of your personal hygiene has not been up to to spec and you've uh, you've had to retain some of your clothing in order to um, do the deed i would be lying if i said no now i have found myself in a pair of ripped 1995 circa novelty Homer Simpson boxer shorts <laughs> that I was too embarrassed to show and it was a good enough reason to walk away. Going through the indignity of another human being other than yourself, Steve, seeing those undergarments would have been too much to bear. There was no follow on I had to save whatever could have been a relationship by, you know, taking the hit and walking away. And so weren't you ever told as a kid that you should always wear 
decent underwear in case you got run over and then when the ambulance came they cut your trousers off um you got decent pants on yeah but i never saw the logic in that steve because if that ever happened you're likely to shit yourself anyway <laughs> <laughs> well just wear brown pants then interior reception the next day donna is talking to karen and kelly comes and rudely interrupts yeah have i got some gossip for you donna and karen turn to face kelly Oh, well, that's a bit of gossip. What is it then? You'll never guess who I saw leaving Sam's shed at half three this morning. Oh, who is it? Tell us who. Come on. What's it matter? Adam. I was having a ciggy, you know, because I couldn't sleep in that. And he was being dead sneaky about it too, like tiptoeing around and everything. But he didn't expect me to be there. Secrets out the new. Oh, are they getting it on then? Aye. No wonder she split with her bloke. I bet you found out about the affair Sam was having. You, should, you shouldn't say things like that. I don't think anything's going on between Adam and Sam. They're just... Well, they're just friends. <laughs> oh, Donna! You're so naive! Sam appears behind them. Hi. Oh, hey, Sam. You all right? I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Are you? Great. Are you going to watch the lads this afternoon? Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. I I can't wait either. It's going to be so funny. And why will it be funny? <laughs> Watching the lads make a right to it of themselves. Oh, Kelly, you can be so nasty sometimes. Donna leaves. What's wrong with her? With who, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'll give you What's wrong with her? <laughs> All right, I'll give you it again. I'm trying to get the right tone for the scene. <clears throat> So what's wrong with her? Oh, what's wrong with her? It could have something to do with the fact that her boyfriend's in the band. What? Who? Dan. Anyway, I, I think they're going to do really great. I can't wait to watch them. I will see. Well, see you later. I've, um, I've got breakfast duty now. Sam leaves. Dan and Donna. Bloody bastard. Kelly turns to Karen. I... I'm near bothered though. Had him first and threw him away. Kelly leaves and Karen picks up the phone and dials in some numbers. Hey, up, Tracy, I've got some gossip for you. <laughs> okay, right. So it's been a day, right? A day, and suddenly Dan is her boyfriend. Like, how did. Uh, and, and, how, <laughs> and, how does, and how does anybody other than. Other than Donna and Dan, no, because well, we, are we assuming that the conversation has taken place outside of this? It, it must have been because Dan left Sam and Adam as about to go in the uh, the chalet, and and Dan goes off with Donna, and they don't mention it or even or even consider it whatsoever. And then she's got breakfast duty, so Donna and Sam must have had a conversation that morning. Donna's then told Sam that Dan's her boyfriend, which I think is a little bit premature at that stage. And I'm not going to say it. Stock alert! Exterior, backstage of the marquee. The boys are preparing themselves for the show. Dan looks very pale. And Daisy is fussing around everyone. Listen, fellas, you've worked really hard for this, dear. Now go out there and show them what you're all made of. Adam turns to Dan. You all right, mate? Oh, I'm going to fuck it up. I know I am. I feel sick. Hey, Dan, listen, it's just nerves, mate. It's just nerves. I, I can't I can't do it. I'm not going on. I'll mess it up and I'll make us all look shite. Look, Dan, we're all in this together. If you don't go on, we don't. We're a team and we stick together. So you've got to pull yourself together and give them hell. Mate, you've got a girlfriend now and she's waiting to see you. For 24 hours. <laughs> Not even 24. The There's about seven hours and they were asleep for six of them. This is crazy. All right, okay. Dan, you've got a girlfriend now and she's waiting to see you. Do this for Donna. You're right. You are. I'm going to do it. The lads cheer. How about a group hug then? All the guys look at Pete strangely. Maybe not then. Come on, guys. Let's do this. They all cheer. Adrenaline pumping. Exterior, marquee, stage. 
there are a lot of people waiting, including the management and all of the camp codes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give it up for Camp Holiday's very own boy band, Fusion! The music starts to play and the guys come running out onto the stage. They all have mics and are getting the audience going. Let's see all your hands clapping! They take position and begin the dance routine. All the camp coats go mad and start screaming for their friends. Dan is struggling slightly but begins to warm and have fun. He winks, obviously to Donna. As the song moves on, the lads take it in turn with their solos. Dan gets a little carried away down the mic and gets the girls in the audience hysterically screaming. As Dan is doing his solo, the rest of the band crowd behind him and clap, encouraging Dan. Ladies, give it up for Dan! Everyone screams and cheers. Adam spots Sam in the audience and throws her a cheeky smile. She giggles girlishly back. The song finishes and the guys strike a pose. The audience goes wild. End of episode two. What is Dan doing down the mic that he's getting so carried away with? I, I don't know. That just getting the audience so carried away. I mean, what's he singing and how's he doing it? I don't. I don't know because he's doing a solo and everyone's kind of clapping and cheering him on. But what I can't imagine what he's doing. Is he licking the microphone or doing something a bit weird with it? I, I, I genuinely don't remember where we were going with that and what we were trying to achieve. Other than to say that he's getting into the performance and that he's slowly improving. That felt like a bit of an epic episode, to be perfectly honest with you. Um I don't know how you're feeling about that, Steve, but that was um, hilarious and and challenging at the same time. Was it hilarious in a good way, though, or was it hilarious in a? I can't believe some of the some of the uh, the the leaps we took in writing there that somebody could be in a relationship for four hours. And uh, <laughs> I think it's a little bit. Hey, listen. Well, we've said this throughout. When you're in that kind of microcosm of uh, of an environment, things tend to happen very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, young love, maybe you know, there there are kind of like infatuation starts and suddenly. But I mean, after four hours, they're boyfriend and girlfriend, and suddenly in a serious relationship. And Adam saying, "Do it for Donna" as a way to kind of motivate Dan to get on the stage. I mean, it's all very hot. It's horribly cheesy, isn't it? I mean. Like that's why I kept laughing, just the, the absurdity and the cheesiness of it all. Everything happens in this hotbed environment. Everything is sped up by 20 times. So friendships, relationships are all at 300 miles an hour. And I think that's probably why we're seeing that happen in such a short period of time. I think it's been building up for a while. But we could remember between episode one and episode two of Last Resort, several months have passed. We don't know how long the flirtation's been going on. I'm a little concerned by Dan's chat with Kelly earlier on in the episode. I mean, I know we're talking, go back a, a few episodes of the podcast, but when we go back into the script, he he approaches Kelly to see if she wants to hang out again and she's she dismisses him and then all of a sudden he's in a relationship with uh, with Donna. Is that, a, is that because she's second best or she's paying him the attention or do you think he really cares? No, I think he uh, was probably feeling a little bit lonely and uh, and had a bit of a a punt at um, at Kelly. She's she's clearly moved on, or has she? Because there is a that you know towards the end of this particular piece, especially when she's talking to Karen, um, she made a comment, and there was something there, and I think we're going to see that materialize in episode three. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out, including how whether Wayne was actually there or not, and what Wayne's going to do. So th- there's a few things, there's a few threads of stories there that that I'm looking forward to seeing. We fall into that classic trope of the will she, won't she with Sam and Adam, the the slow burn kind of relationship. We've compensated with Dan and Donna, which I think is that's why it's so concentrated because we have to get you know there's some payoff there between them two. But with Sam and Adam, it's just like, oh, just get over it. Just get on with it, will you? You know, because we know it's going to happen. Or, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe, you know, there's a reason. Is there a reason why Adam picked up the picture of Craig? Is there a reason why the picture of Craig is still there, despite the fact they've only been broken up a whole day? I mean, that's a lot of time to get rid of the evidence. Who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows? Maybe Craig will turn up. We just don't know what's going to happen in, 
the next I don't know because I have a, I have a confession to make. The the next script is still in my attic. I, ha- I so I have no idea what even the first page of the next script says. No, nope. and I have not read ahead, so we will find out on the very next episode. Bad Scripts was written and performed by Mike Garlier and Steve Jones, a Beach Tide production. <laughs>